Hello Indie Game fans, if I were to point to one ubiquitous character to fly the flag of indie games, that would be Shovel Knight, with his iconic character design and penchant for popping up everywhere, so here's a look at all of the games and guest appearances to date. Do be warned, you will hear many, many iterations of the main theme, but that goes with the territory for being such an iconic character. We have to begin with the core game of Shovel Knight, retroactively named Shovel of Hope, which began life as a humble little Kickstarter title from a team of developers that left way forward, makers of the Shantae series of games. The ambitious Kickstarter stretch goals eventually led to it having five component parts, where in addition to Shovel of Hope, we have Plague of Shadows, Spectre of Torment, King of Cards, and the platform fighter Shovel Knight Showdown, all packaged together as the treasure trove. For an indie game character to spin off its own titles, and for all of these entries to be fantastic standalone games is an accomplishment indeed, where the developers even went the extra mile to craft special stages and story campaigns for each character, even to the extent of adding the card game Jousters to King of Cards, which shows the amount of effort and work put in. This is one of the success stories of indie games, where the crossover appeal and flexibility of the character has translated into its fair share of crossovers, which is a fantastic way to get the name of your game out there. We'll go in alphabetical order, beginning with Aegis Defenders, a side-scrolling pixel art tower defense game where your party of adventurers have to protect their village from a powerful empire. Shovel Knight is both a playable character and an NPC in this, with the iconic shovel digging attack and the downwards pogo thrust are present, where it's interesting to see him in the tower defense title. The next title is a lesser known arcade style Pac Man like ASDAD All Stars Dungeons and Diamonds, where it's about collecting as many diamonds as you can by using your maze navigation skills. It's a smaller game which is multiplayer only, so there are limits on this, where I believe the characters are merely cosmetic without special abilities. It seems as though Yacht Club games have a decent relationship with Japanese developers and Inti Creates in particular, case in point being Azure Striker Gunvolt 2. Shovel Knight is a special boss fight which can be accessed by scanning the amiibo, looking to be quite an intense fight with all the expected moves. One of the more unique appearances for heroes is Blade Strangers, a fighting game of all things, where we did get a much beefier version of the character. The more realistic and humanoid proportions of the character is a neat alternative as compared to the retro look, but this game is basically a best of indies as well, with appearances of characters from Isaac to Cave Story, and while it isn't a mainstream fighting game that is played at tournaments, I do think that it's still a pretty neat title. Back to Inti Creates, this time in their side-scrolling crossed with action-adventure title Blaster Master Zero where Hero makes a special appearance alongside Shantae. One thing that I love about this series is the size of the characters in relation to the level, where our character is very small which just looks adorable, and the portrayal of Shovel Knight in an action-adventure Zelda-style setting is neat as well, and just shows the possibilities of the character down the line. One of my favourite games is Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, the self-styled Igavania that is essentially Castlevania in all but name, but without the involvement of Konami. In this, Shovel Knight appears as an enemy, but equipping the Shovel Knight armour transforms you into the character, having some of the iconic moves and with the beefier proportions that is in line with the art style of this game. Shovel Knight has been such an iconic character that crossovers are not limited to indie games, this time appearing in the Ubisoft published free-to-play platform fighter Brawlhalla. But he didn't come alone, having Black, Plague, Spectre and King Knight being included as well. I have to say, developer Blue Mammoth Games is absolutely killing it with this game, having crossovers with all sorts of IPs across a wide spectrum, from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Kung Fu Panda, Steven Universe, Adventure Time and more, so having an indie character alongside all of these is amazing indeed. 
Creepy Castle is a wonderful 8-bit adventure RPG that mixes a large variety of genres where both Shovel and Plague Knight make a special appearance where this game is a hidden gem worth a play. One of the more recent appearances is in Cyber Shadow from January this year, where it was the obvious tie-in since Yacht Club Games was publishing that after all. The crossover comes in the form of Amiibo support, where the fairy versions of Shovel, Plague, Spectre and King Knight are in this, each granting a unique colour palette and some unique interactions, which, like Blaster Master Zero above, looks absolutely adorable. There have been a number of weird crossovers, the first of which is Dino Run DX, one of the original Endless Runner games which did get an indie pack crossover with everything from Hyperlight Drifter, Knight in the Woods, Super Meat Boy, Splunky, and of course Shovel Knight, where the Shovel Knight dinosaur does look very weird indeed. And see if you can spot and name your other favourite indie characters in this video. If you enjoy crossovers like me, smack that like button and subscribe to the channel for more indie game goodness. In perhaps the most obvious crossover, the addition of a Shovel Knight costume to Fall Guys was a no-brainer, joining quite the epic range of characters from Bomberman to Sonic to 2B from Nier Automata, where I do think that Shovel Knight counts among that top flight of characters by now. Remember when I said that things would get weird? Well, I do think that the For Honor crossover takes the cake, not only inserting the iconic helmet into the game, but also adding various stickers and decorations to this medieval combat action game. Fighting games and platform fighters are generally where crossovers happen, where one of the best, unique entries in the space is Indie Pogo. Yes, while it is a platform fighter at its core, the pogo in the name means that your characters automatically jump whenever you touch the ground, so there's a lot of aerial combat and maneuvers, making it quite different in terms of how it plays. The other commonly used areas for crossovers is local multiplayer titles, where the party platformer Move or Die does feature our hero as a playable character, although it is cosmetic here, but I do love the interpretation and adaptation of the art style of this developer. Another interesting crossover is Mutant Mud's Super Challenge, a super difficult 2D retro platformer that meshes together nicely with the original design of the character. Most interestingly, our hero swaps out the shovel for a gun in line with the mechanics of this game, but a gun, that's quite an interesting departure. We go back to platform fighters with probably the best in the space, Rivals of Aether. It's another obvious crossover, since I do think that this is the most technically sound platform fighter in the indie space, where a lot of care has gone into the addition of this character, from adapting the sprites to look similar, adding alternate colour palettes and even the addition of the digging, gems and fishing mechanics. Awesome adaptation and crossover between two great indie studios showing how to do one of these right. The voxely action-adventure RPG Riverborn was a decent little action title and that also features some indie heroes including Shovel Knight among the who's who of indie gaming legend. Wait, 
Did I say that the For Honor crossover was the weirdest? I take that back, it has to be Road Redemption, the combat racer that was Indie Gaming's answer to Road Rash, where Shovel Knight on a bike is something that I never expected to see in a million years, but yet, here we are. The realistic look, guns, and sheer violence of this makes it quite the anomaly in terms of crossovers, but again, it does show the wonder of indie games in that truly anything is possible. If you know of any other very weird crossovers, I would love to know, so do pop it in the comments below. I do always get confused between Runbo and Move or Die, both being multiplayer party platformers, where of course, as mentioned, is ripe for crossover potential. I do like the art style, almost looking like some sorts of cartoon, with a nice interpretation of our hero as well. Mmm, yummy! Smells like breakfast! It's my favourite! One of indie gaming's legends is Commander Video from the Bitrip Runner series, where the latest game, Runner 3 from 2018, did feature Shovel Knight as a playable character. The mechanics are in line with this game, all animated rather nicely might I add, making it another noteworthy appearance among the greets in the space. I still find it amazing that the biggest platform fighter in the world, Super Smash Bros Ultimate, did manage to have Shovel Knight as a character in the game, and while it is only an assist trophy rather than a full-blown character, the fact that Shovel Knight can be on screen next to Samus and Mario is pretty amazing, again being a testament to the little indie game that could with this franchise. Our final guest appearance is in the 3D platformer Ukulele, a classic throwback to the 90s era of mascot platformers, where Hero appears as an NPC character. Fantastic 3D model as well, and I do wonder what a Shovel Knight as a 3D action platformer would look like. We are not done quite just yet, since I want to mention some physical crossovers into the real world. Aside from the usual merch like t-shirts, plushies, prints and more, the most interesting one to me is Shovel Knight Cross Arby's. This is a fast food chain in America, having cross promotion with their kids meal, which came with physical disc launcher tokens, as well as DLC codes, which had various cosmetic effects in-game, such as changing all enemies into Arby's food items as shown in this trailer, being pretty weird but cool as well. We have seen a number of games make the successful jump from desktop to tabletop, releasing their own board games, often via Kickstarter, where Shovel Knight Dungeon Duels is the game of note here. Players control different coloured Shovel Knights and must attack enemies, collect treasure, avoid traps and fight bosses, where the player with the most treasure at the end of the game wins. Its Kickstarter campaign concluded successfully in 2019, where apparently people are beginning to receive their copies, but there doesn't appear to be a way to get this if you missed out on the campaign, so perhaps keep your eyes peeled for more information. We have seen the sheer mainstream appeal of Shovel Knight, being able to be put in virtually all sorts of games, but I do want to close off with a look to the future. It's perhaps the most recognisable indie game character at this point, and with that comes influence, where upcoming Shovel Knight related games begins with Shovel Knight Dig, one that plays with vertical level design instead of horizontal, having you dig down into the earth, going after a new group of bosses such as Drill and Hive Knight in order to reclaim your loot. It's 
It's a roguelite with procedural generation, so yet another new genre for our hero. Speaking of new genres, I'm also looking forward to Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon, another roguelite title, but this time wrapped around a puzzle game. You're able to attack enemies which are grouped together, moving around the grid while enemies and items continually fall from above, where the match 3 elements does intrigue me the most. It does look fantastic as well, giving off a little bit of a Necrodancer vibe and does even have boss fights which I'm curious about. As for the rest of Shovel Knight, Yacht Club Games have said that they are working on new projects and new IP, so not exactly Shovel Knight content, but a Shovel Knight 2 in the near future is a very likely possibility, and based on what was shown here today, the future is very bright indeed. For my picks of the best current and future action platformers, watch these videos and I will see you after the jump.